Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's create a tool that's going to be a big help in our shop. Who doesn't need a fly swatter? Well, let's make a basic fly swatter. Get the feel for the pattern. Then let's blow one up. See what we can do with it. All right. So anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. We're going to make a simple fly swatter. It's going to be effective and helpful to us in our shop. But then we're going to backtrack. Let's look at some ideas that will create a fly swatter that would only come from a true leather shop. So on our main body here, let's jump over to a digital pick. Outside dimensions, 5 inches by 4 inches, or about 12.7 centimeters by 10.16 centimeters. On our center line up at the top, we've got two holes. This is where we're going to connect this to our stick. So I'm going to come down one half of an inch, 1.27 centimeters, and then I'm going to give that a three quarter inch spread, 1.9 centimeters. On my corners, I've just come in three quarters of an inch from either on either side and just cut across. Now, this is a weapon that needs accuracy and stealth. So let's drop in some holes. Let's reduce the wind resistance on this, making this a very accurate weapon. That's right. So over here, all I'm going to do here is on my center line, I'm just going to come down two and a quarter inches, give or take, about 5.7 centimeters. And then I'm going to work my way out in three quarter inch increments in both directions, vertical and horizontal. Now we could add one more hole right here, but really I like the angle of that. That's going to look good. All right, so on our stick, let's jump over to a digital pick of both. Now on this stick, we can find these at just about any hardware store, and we'll talk about that. But basically what I'm looking for, about three quarters of an inch wide, 1.9, maybe two centimeters, and about 16 inches long. We can add or subtract to that. Down on one end, we've got our holes to connect to our fly swatter at one half inch in and three quarters of an inch in. And down on this end, well, we've got to drop a lanyard on this. Absolutely. Now the stick, we can find these at just about any hardware store. Roughly three quarters of an inch, give or take, and about 16. There's my two holes to connect and my lanyard. Now all I've done here is add a little bit of stain and a little polyurethane. Now you woodworkers, I absolutely respect your craft because I am not, but we don't have to be. And in fact, on that one, we're going to talk about that. We've got a cool direction. Okay, so enough talking here. Let's jump over to our main table, cut some leather. We can go with just about any leather in our shop. What I would prefer is something a little bit heavier, maybe a six to seven, seven to eight ounce leather. We're going to go with a veg tan for a couple of reasons, and we'll circle back to that. But say you've got two lighter weight chrome tans, maybe two four to fives. Just put those back to back, add some contact cement. Now you've actually got a pretty thick piece of leather. So all kinds of options here. Now I didn't go into great detail here. On our stick, all I've done is I've sanded this down. Like I said, I'm not a woodworker and we don't have to be. I've dropped in a stain. I think this is called provincial, but basically a walnut. And then I've added a little polyurethane to that. If we go with a natural veg tan, we get to dye this in the color that we want. So how about a walnut? to match the handle. Secondly, we're going to go with a belly. This is a seven to eight ounce belly. This is a great cut. It's the least preferable cut to the production folks. So therefore, for us crafters, very inexpensive. And with Weaver, we get a good piece of leather. I mean, look at the flesh side on that. This is beautiful. All right. So anyway, let's jump down here. Let's trace in our pattern. We've got this traced, so while we're here, let's go ahead and mark for all of our holes. Good, we've got that. Let's cut this out. On our round corners, if we're not comfortable cutting these, all we have to do is make small cuts. In fact, we can make as many as we want. And we have a pretty decent round corner. Okay, that's set and ready to go. Let's jump over to our punch table, drop in some holes. 
We're going to use two different hole sizes here. Right here, to attach to our handle, we're going to go with a 732nd, or about a 5.5 millimeter. 3 16 inch or 4.76 is fine. So let's knock in our two holes here. Now let's jump over to an eighth inch punch or about 3.1 millimeters and let's hit the balance of our marks. Easy enough there. Let's jump back to our main table, do a little edge work, then we'll add some dye. We could go right where we are, but I like to add a groove and an edger to my edges. It just makes the edge look more finished, makes the whole project look more professional. So the primary job here is to sink a groove in the edge of our leather if we're going to sew. Well, I use a groover on every edge. Again, it makes it look so very finished. So let's work all the way around. There we go. That looks good. Now our edger, we're going with about a 7 to 8 here, 6, 7, 7, 8. We could use a 2, but that's going to take a good bit off. So let's jump back to our master tool number 1 edger, and again, go all the way around on the face and the back. That's going to give us a good professional edge. Now let's do the same back here. Well, that looks good. Now we have the opportunity to round and slick our edges when we're done. Let's reset here, add some dye. There are a number of ways we can dye leather, but the biggest point here, it doesn't have to be expensive, messy, or time consuming. We can always use our dressing sponge. This is a great sponge, but I tend to cut it down to make it go a little bit further. We're working with a smaller project here, so daubers, these will absolutely work. We're gonna dip dye. First and foremost, because of consistency. You'll see what I'm talking about, but also speed and ease. Now we're gonna use our Pro Dye in our Walnut. That's really the only reason that we're able to successfully dip dye. So right here, I've just got a hook made from metal, just some wire from any hardware store, inexpensive wire. And I've got a rag right here. If we've got some dye that just wants to sit on the surface, we'll wipe that off. So let's run through. Lay this out, and in fact, our dye is all but gone. But how easy is that? And this is going to be beautifully consistent. So let's give this about 90 minutes, maybe two hours dry time. Ample dry time, and our dye looks good. How easy was that to dye? Also, we want to store our dye in, in the original container. A small, inexpensive funnel and a paper towel. Easy cleanup, but notice too, back to my original point, I almost don't even have dye on my gloves. So dye, not expensive, messy, or time consuming, and we get a perfect outcome when we dip dye. So let's jump over to a top coat. Now, if you're new to leather craft, this is gonna give us a light gloss, but it's also going to enrich the dye color. It's gonna protect us from the leather and the leather from us. But I like the leather balm because it's so easy. We're gonna apply with one rag, simply apply lightly. Then we're gonna buff with our second rag. Basically, I call this my wet and my dry rag. So let's apply this somewhat sparingly. And that's all we need. Let's buff off. We don't want any there we go, we don't want any bubbles on that. That's gonna stand out. So now let's take this rag and let's buff this. How about that? Now that looks good, doesn't it? One more step. We've got a number of materials that we can use on our edges. Water works great. Our gum trag, or gum tragacanth, just for slicking our edges. But I like our leather balm. Let's just add a little bit to our edge. Good, let's take off the remaining. And now let's slick our edges. Already, just a few passes. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but that's got a bit of a gloss to it. Feels good. I'm gonna do that all the way around. Well, that looks good. It's glossed, it's smooth, it feels good. 
very professional job on this. Now, before we finish this out, before we assemble this, let's jump over to our punch table. Let's just look at some possibilities. I've got a piece of leather cased, ready to go. This is just right. We've got a good video on this. Now we could always drop in a vayner, some kind of a geometric tool. We could do a barbed wire border. Well, we could keep it simple. We're not. We're gonna go all out on this one because I've been waiting for a project to use a good complicated stamp design on. So let's start with just our basic pattern. We're gonna keep our holes in the same place and then we're gonna build around that. So let's mark in our holes. And we are marked. Now, any guidelines that we use, any anchor lines, we're gonna see these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our stamps in between our marks. We'll punch our holes later. So let's start right here. We've got the two holes to attach. So I'm gonna come down to the next line. Now our geometric stamp, this is one of my favorites. I'm gonna drop this right in between those holes as centered as I can, top to bottom and left to right. Nice stamp, good impression. Okay, let's do the same again. Right here, let's take our time, make this look good. Okay, I'm dropping these in between our marks. So let's do these three lines and two up here. Okay, well that looks good thus far. So now we're gonna go sideways or lengthwise here. What I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna drop this right in between our marks, but now I've got points to connect to. So let's drop that right on that tool. See if we can get that right between our spots. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna work my way down each of our lines. Well, that looks good. Now, if we don't have perfect round circles here, yeah, I don't either, but we're gonna take care of that because the next tool up, let's jump over to a sunburst. Now I'm gonna drop this in every area that does not have a mark for our hole. Yeah, there we go. So that's gonna help out if we don't have perfect lines. Okay, looking better and better. Are we gonna stop here? Absolutely not. But also too, if we've got little imperfections in here, well, that's a hallmark of a hand stamped piece. Next up, let's jump over to a flower center. We're gonna drop this right in that circle burst. Okay, filling in. Now, let's add one more tool. Let's drop in a cedar right in the center of our geometric. There we go, and I think the toughest part there is making sure we've got a cedar in every one, every one of our geometric tools, I think I do. So I'm gonna let this dry, then punch my holes, I'll edge, dye top coat, then let's meet over on the pattern table, assemble our two fly swatters. Well, that looks good too. Nice pattern on that. That's a top quality fly swatter. All right, so let's jump over here with our stick. Now we're gonna use a Chicago screw. If you're new to Leathercraft, it's basically a threaded rivet or it's sometimes called a screw post. So right here, we're gonna go with a quarter of an inch. We're going through a thinner piece of, of leather and wood. So let's start right here. Let's go with our antique brass. That's gonna look good on this color. Now, I like to add just a little dab of white glue to these. I wanna be able to take them out if I ever need to, but I do wanna tack these down because they can work themselves out. But just a little dab, in fact, I just use the Leathercraft cement. 
All right, now we can go from either side here, but let's come in from the face. Let's drop in our screws. That looks good with that brass. Flip that over, drop on our handle. Cool thing about Chicago screws from Weaver, we've got an Allen wrench right there. We can actually use an Allen wrench. If you've ever tried to put these in with a screwdriver, it can be a little bit tough. Very nice fly swatter. Really happy with that. We need one more thing. We need a lanyard on this. So let's take some of our Latigo lace. And not that. Well, that's a fly swatter to be proud of. Yeah, see if we can get that big thing in the shot. That's nice. Okay, let's jump over to our next. Now, we don't have to be a woodworker. This is simply trim from one of the bigger hardware stores. I've cut it and I've just glued it back to back, added a little stain and a little polyurethane, just like our other handle. So we're really getting fancy here, right? So on this end, I've actually gone 16 inches, but then I've cut the other side at 14 inches. So that can sit right there. So now let's jump over to our antique nickel screws, see how these are gonna look. Now I'm going a little bit longer with my Chicago screw here. We're using a quarter inch, but over here we're jumping up to a three eighths because we're a little bit thicker there. Wow, again, let's see if I get the whole thing in the shot. That's, that's a heck of a fly swatter, isn't it? Let's add our lanyard. Well, that is a beautiful fly swatter. That's gonna dress up any area where we, where we choose to put that. Let's get a better pick of both of these. I like the simple, clean, and it works good, but the decorative, I love the stamp pattern, and I just love the handle on that. So again, both of our fly swatters, I think we've done very well on these. Form and function, these are gonna be a big help in our shop, and they're gonna look good in our shop. All told, I think we nailed it on these. I hope you come up with some beautiful designs for your fly swatters and have a blast doing it. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.